five months later, somebody put a bullet in his head. Coincidence. Just a pure coincidence, I'm sure. Okay? That law, that executive order has never been repealed. We can still do that. We can still have the Treasury print silver certificates. Why don't they? You know, no, nobody wants to stand in front of that bullet anymore. Do they have the silver to back um, Yeah, there's quite a bit of silver. Silver is actually better for us right now than gold because there is so much of it. There's too much of it. I mean, we had people that tried to corner the market on it, and they couldn't do it. There's just too much. You know? So, uh, then on page 27, I have a series of quotes that are all dealing with the Federal Reserve. Uh, it says, 100% of what is collected is absorbed solely by interest on the federal debt. All individual income tax revenues are gone before one nickel is spent on services taxpayers expect from the government. This was the Grace Commission that was uh, authorized by uh, Reagan. They did a, a study. They said, your tax money does not go for hospitals and roads and national defense. Not a single penny. It's a lie. How many people have ever heard of the Grace Commission? Well, they've kind of swept it under the rug. I'm still trying to get a copy of it. Uh, Daniel Webster said, Of all contrivances for cheating the laboring classes of mankind, none has been more effective than that which deludes them with paper money. Um, Thomas Jefferson said, If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation and then deflation, the banks and corporations that will grow up around them will deprive the people of all property until their children will wake up homeless on the continents their father conquered. You're going to end up with spit. I'll let you go through uh, those other quotes. Here's the President Andrew Jackson. You are a den of vipers and thieves. I intend to rout you out. And by the grace of eternal God, I will rout you out. And he did the best job of uh, getting rid of the uh, uh, thing. Page 28 has other uh, quotes. In the middle, Representative Lewis McFadden said, The Federal Reserve Banks are the most corrupt institutions the world has ever seen. There is not a man within the sound of my voice who does not know that this nation is run by the international bankers. And he was speaking in Congress. Congress knows exactly what's going on. Congress is not working out for your best interests. Now, how did all this happen? In 1913, the Federal Reserve Act was uh, written, and the Federal Reserve started printing money. They were loaning money to the United States. We were obligated to pay our debts, our interest, in gold. We'll give you this paper. You have to pay us in gold. That happened for 33 or for 20 years. In 1933, the United States went bankrupt. Now, I've met somebody who actually heard Franklin Delano Roosevelt say that live. This is not some history book. This is a person who heard it for himself. And in June, on June 5th of 1933, FDR, our favorite guy, passed a joint resolution to suspend the gold standard. So Congress presumably passed a law that says you are not allowed to demand gold or silver. Up until then, you can say, I'll give you anything you want, but you've got to pay me in gold. <coughs> and FDR says, no, you can't do that. It's now illegal to demand gold. Says who? How can they make it illegal to demand gold? Do you have an unlimited right to contract? Yes. So how can FDR tell you what you can or cannot accept? But, whereas... 
the existing emergency. Which existing emergency are they talking about? The bankruptcy. The bankruptcy, the depression. Oh my gosh, the economy is terrible. Oh yeah, but you created that artificially. The existing emergency has disclosed the provisions of obligations which purport to give the obligee a right to require payment in gold or a particular kind of coin or currency or in the amount of coin in the U.S. Uh, measured thereby, obstruct the power of Congress to regulate the value of money. So your rights are kind of a pain in the butt for us, so we're going to eliminate your rights. They can't do that. They didn't give them to us. They can't take them away. And this act is completely and totally unconstitutional. And down below, they say the term coin or currency means coin or currency of the United States, including Federal Reserve notes. So suddenly, worthless paper is now going to be traded the same as gold and silver. Isn't that wonderful? Page 30. In 1933, this is 1933. This is as it was happening. There were people awake, but nobody was listening. Congressman Beck, speaking from the congressional record. What does that mean? On the floor. I mean, on the floor, on the congressional record means that you can go to the archives and look it up. Don't take my word for it. Don't read the man's words yourself. Because I think of all the damnable heresies that have ever been suggested in connection with the Constitution, the doctrine of emergency is the worst. It means that when Congress declares an emergency, there is no Constitution. It means it's death. It's the very doctrine that the German Chancellor is invoking today. Which German Chancellor? Hitler. Hitler. So FDR did exactly the same thing that Hitler did. We bombed Hitler. We call him the worst, most evil man in history. But we're going to build a monument to FDR? Where's the logic in that? I have promised myself that before I die, I am going to go to Hyde Park, New York, and I am going to piss on his grave. <laughs> Zoom in on that, would you? <laughs> it says Chancellor Hitler is at least frank about it. We pay the Constitution lip service, but the result <laughs> is the same. And so since March 9th of 1933, the United States has been, in fact, in a state of declared national emergency. My mother was born in 1934. She has lived her entire life under a state of national emergency. Well, if we're in a state of national emergency, how can we go out to these Fourth of July picnics and throw the frisbee and have hot dogs? It's an emergency. Shouldn't we be running around going, the sky is falling, the sky is falling? How could it be a national emergency? An emergency means temporary. You know, it's on fire, you put the fire out, the emergency's over with. How can an emergency last for 70 years? Just by definition, it's no longer an emergency. Now, the president may seize property, organize and control the means of production, seize commodities, assign military forces abroad, institute martial law, seize and control all transportation and communication, regulate the operation of private enterprise, restrict travel, and in a plethora of particular ways, control the lives of American citizens. Don't you feel special? And they have been renewing that uh, emergency. Yeah. I guess in 1970 sometime they said, wait a minute, you can't have an emergency that lasts that long. The president has to reallocate that emergency every two years. Yeah. And they do. Start writing Freedom of Information Acts and asking about all that. We need a president that's willing to say the national